so my program, you had to do an internship in casting in either New York or LA to graduate. Whoa, and that's so, cool. Yeah, it's a. I mean, they've had that internship requirement since the seventies. Wow. So they were really ahead of the curve in that, and it's one of the reasons I chose the school. Um, but really? in order, yeah, you chose it be- because of the casting internship. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because I thought, the what foresight. a great way to transition from school to professionally working yeah so then you would have and that was the whole point of it right you go to the city that you want to be in you learn the city while you still have the safety net of school right and you're also meeting casting directors and you like the internship had to be full-time so oh, i was wow. working like 40 60 hours a week in a casting office for free and it was for school credit that's not fair. Right. it wasn't free it was school credit um, you were actually paying to go there. <laughs> I was paying to do my, it's true. I paid for my entire semester while I did the internship. Um, but I learned so much about what acting was, what casting was and everything that went into the process. It was invaluable. That's so cool. Yeah. Did you do it in LA or New York? LA. And so then they have just like one office that sets them up with those internships or do they have a bunch and you get to choose or you just get assigned? Ra- How does that work? So at the time, the school was primarily a theater school, primarily. Okay. And so they had a bunch of great New York internships. They had internships at the casting office like Telsey and um, you know Meg Simon and uh, all the big both theater and television offices in New York had set internships and they still do. And those people still take students from Otterbein every year. Yeah. But very few people had gone out to LA, so they had nothing set up. So I had to figure out how to find an internship. Oh, wow. Uh, I was in, uh, Ohio. Wow. Um, so yeah, so I found my internship and then came out here. How'd you find it? it? You just sent emails or was it emails? Uh, you email? yeah, you just reached out to people. I reached out to people. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I mean, yes, there were emails. I did have the email. Okay. Yes. Um, so yeah, I sent emails and then I, an alum from my school was working, um, as a producer's assistant in LA. Oh, that's and great. So I reached out to him just to, for advice and he sent me the UTA job list, which oh, I didn't even sure. know what UTA was. I didn't know what any of the companies were. But I just started looking them up and sending my resume to anyone I could. Um, and then I had a few interviews over the phone. And oh, ended wow. Up, yeah. So and I ended up getting an internship for um, David Giella. Okay. He was no longer casting, but he was casting the shows Touched by an Angel in Promised Land. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And it was like the seventh season of Touched. So they were the number one CBS show. That's amazing. Yeah. It was a really great learning experience. What did they have you do then? Just go through headshots or... Um, well, when I got there, so they were doing two shows and they had one casting director for each show and then there was an assistant in the office and that was it. Okay. The assistant, um, had a death in the family my first week there. And so she left to go like, I think she's from the Bay area. So she left to deal with all of that. Mm-hmm. And so I just sort of jumped in and did her job to the best wow. of my ability while she was gone. Um, and you know, obviously the casting directors were helping me and showing me, et cetera, but that I just had to because they had nobody else to do it. Yeah. And then when she came back, it had gone well and it was a training program essentially. And so she just sort of let me keep doing it. That's great. What were you, yeah. what were you, what was your like day to day? Um, doing? well, this was back when headshots came to the door. Right. Um, so you'd have to sort out through all the headshots. I had to put the breakdowns out. I had to write the breakdowns and then the casting directors would approve them. Um, what did you do with headshots? Did you have a save pile and a throwaway pile or what would you? No, we would arrange them, um, by agency and then like ABC. So the agency and management companies that were a B and C, which I wasn't creating those categories (laughs) as my 20 year old intern self. Um, but I was dividing them up and then we would go through the pictures after that and pull people out, but they would always stay each episode, we would have these bins. Sure. And then we'd toss them at the end of the episode, and ones would come in. Wow, um, that's crazy. Yeah. And so you, I scheduled all the auditions, taped the auditions. That's um, amazing. Closed deals. Like, one of the first deals I remember closing, I had nothing to do with negotiating it, but it was the first one where I, like, called to get all the closing information and type everything up was for Muhammad Ali because Touch My Angel had guest stars like that, and it was very exciting for me. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was really cool. It was very cool. Yeah. So did you move... That was, like, a summer, your senior year or something? Uh, it was the fall of my senior year. Okay. Or, no, winter of my senior year. And then did you... When you graduated, did you come right to L.A.? Uh, I stayed in L.A. because I had arranged it so that was my... Last oh semester. nice yeah my we were on quarters at the time so I graduated in March 
<laughs> had they put you up out here or no. did you have to figure it out? Oh. You had to figure it all out. Jeez. I had to find an apartment, pay for the apartment. So you were all, all set though once you transitioned out. You were like, I'm already here. I'm good to go. Yeah, I mean, I had a couple of other friends that were interning at the same time, so I had to find my own apartment after the internship was over. Gotcha. Um, which was a trying experience <laughs> as someone with no credit and no job. <laughs> but I managed to figure it out. Um, but yeah, the, my goal was to move out here once and to be able to take that internship and turn it into work um, or connections that would get me work as quickly as possible and not to have to go back home, right. spend a semester and then figure out how to move back out again and start all over. Right. So I guess the big question is when did you switch from cast from acting to casting? Was then. it that internship right away or like, what was the reason? Was there a specific reason or was it just job security? What was, what was your thought? I mean, it's a combination of things. Some of it was job security, although I don't know that <laughs> casting as is always to, as yes. secure <laughs> as I thought it was going to be. Um, <laughs> Some of it was job security. Some of it was learning how subjective a lot of casting is mm -hmm. and how much rejection is involved for actors. And quite honestly, I wasn't sure that I was up for that. Yeah. And I liked casting. And I liked what it was. And I liked the creative aspect of it. And then I met really great people. And the first job that I got offered was an associate at 20th Century Fox in the feature casting department. So I was really never anybody's assistant. Wow. And I got offered, I, it was a, I mean, it was such a gift to be offered that job. And so. That kind of made the decision for you yeah, almost. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. I took it. I said, yes. <laughs> yes. And I then will. you were completely in a different yeah. highway lane. Yeah. 